Welcome to a very interesting episode of the developer log of Unbail. This is a video I've been meaning to make for a while now and I'm really excited to finally show this to you guys. Um, this is the this is the explanation of how the fire camp simulation works and it's really interesting. So we're gonna jump right to it. We're gonna craft a fire pit um, out of some wood logs of a tree that I chopped down before you know, and we're gonna turn it on with a rock because uh, we're a giver so we turn uh, the fire on with a, with a rock. <laughs> That's all we need. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, place it. Um, let's see. We're gonna place it. Uh, well, yeah, actually here is just fine. All right. So this fire camp is actually a simulation. Uh, well, it's actually a. It's not a simulation unit. It's a world event that is attached to a simulation unit, just like pretty much any other simulation. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, world event you interact with. Um, this simulation unit, the fire camp, has two simulation containers one of them is fire and the other one is fuel now fuel is one of uh, could be simply uh those two wood logs that we made uh fire camp with and we can actually add more fuel uh, to that container right now by just you know throwing in a branch say i guess and um that's gonna go to that container now the other container is fire and uh fire also has its own simulation running so on every simulation take uh, that happens on every in-game minute, as you can see time flowing on the bottom left. Uh, the fire um, sort of, uh, is given all the fuel and fire bites uh, off a little bit of that fuel. How much? That's where the magic happens. So um, that's basically an equation uh, between the local wind speed, the local humidity, and uh, how big the fire is right now. It's slightly affected also by how much fuel left there is. So humidity is gonna make it harder for fi fire to eat uh, the fuel, but uh, wind speed and the current size of the fire will actually increase uh, how much it bites off the fuel. Um, now, whatever it bites off the fuel, it will be turned into fire and merged with itself, making it grow larger, right? So after that happens, um, Part of this fire is turned into energy. Ain't that cool? Little physics going on. So, uh, that energy is then split into two emitters. Photon emitters and heat emitters. Now, f uh, photon emitters is, well, the bright, the brightness we see, the glowing we see around the fire camp right now. Um, but the other emitter is the heat. And as you can see right now, um, the character currently feels like it's 28 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm. Now, if we walk away, you can see the temperature dropping on the bottom left down to 6 degrees Celsius and then back up. The reason why this is happening is not because I am close to a fire camp. Sure, I am, but the actual reason is because the character is asking the simulation what's the temperature right here. And since there's a heat emitter that is changing the temperature in that area, we feel it's warm, so we don't get cold and we don't get sick. Now, the other interesting thing is that the heat emitters actually can actually accumulate in an uh, indoor map, like a cave. And the reason why is because caves, just like a fire camp, are also simulation units, only that they are connected to the map instead of a single object. So, uh, on a cave, actually, if you have a small cave, especially, it's, it's depending on the you know, cave size, you could actually set up a fire camp and make the ambient temperature rise. Perfect for a very cold night where one fire camp is not enough, but making two may take too many resources. And um, this is where the beauty of the game is, where you can use your own natural logic, logic and um, just instincts and expect the game to behave like that, and more often than not, the game will. Um, so it is logical to expect that a fire camp in a small area should, may, should should be warmer, and it is. And the reason why is because the heat is being accumulated in that map. And uh, I think that's where the game really comes down to, to uh, present you with different scenarios that are always changing. They're not scripted, they're happening because the weather is changing. You are in different areas with different uh, resources and environments nearby, and you have to figure out how to react to each other. Sure, you know, as you progress, you find other things uh, that challenge you, but um, 
this is where the beauty of the game is found i think in, in that beautiful connection with nature and our own primal instincts sorry we had to set up another fire camp because ours will just went went off <laughs> we forgot to add some fuel to it so uh and but you know time went by uh so so the other thing we did not talk about and this is the last thing um is where's humidity and wind speed coming from right so humidity is coming from the simulation itself right the weather it's just weather uh and you know different ambients like caves and so on can affect uh how, how humid it is right now it's actually quite humid um, and the other thing is wind speed. Now, wind speed we talked about a little bit, but we can also um, affect it, right? Well, right now, see, um, it's humid, so it cannot really catch up. So we can blow wind into it. And this is basically adding wind emitters where I am standing. It's not actually sending wind to the far game, just creating wind around here, basically. And um, that, see, that helps, actually. It's still trying to go against the current, but anyways. Um, but as you can see, uh, we, we can affect our environment as well. This is, this is a small way in which we are affecting it, but in either case, we are affecting it uh, by blowing wind. We can also like move. If Every time we move, we are actually generating some wind by our walk. So that's actually how we can make uh, torches uh, catch on fire faster, by just running with the torch on us, right? See, like we're running. But right now we are generating wind by doing that. So, um, <laughs> but ain't that pretty neat? Anyways, I hope this gave you a better insight on uh, how the game works. Sure, it's about the far game, but this this tells you a lot of how everything kind of works and uh, how it's more about uh, taking what you believe of the real world mechanics, and nature's mechanics, and trying to apply them here for you to, to survive, and less about figure figure on the game mechanics, which basically take on nature's, uh, which I think are simply beautiful. Uh, that is all for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.